Hi, this is Pat Moorhead. We are live at CES 2023 in the Luminar booth, having a good time talking about one of the most disruptive technology platforms out there today, and that is the car. I'm here with my co-host, Daniel Newman. How are you, my friend? It's great to have the 6.5 on the road here at CES 2023 in the West Hall at the Luminar booth with our friend Austin Russell, CEO. Um, I'm going fast today because it's late in the day, and uh, we've had Austin on the show before. So unlike uh, some of the guests, we had Volvo on, we had Polaris on, super cool. Austin, you are an alumni of the 6.5. Welcome back. Congratulations. Awesome booth. Thanks for having us here. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah thanks for being here, too. No, it's awesome. It's uh, already off to the races there, too. It feels like. Even though it's only been a day, it almost feels like a week. So, you know, <laughs> we're uh, charging ahead. But, uh, but yeah, let's let's do it. Yeah, so we got to start at the top here. Let's talk about announcements. You got a lot of big announcements over the past couple of years, but uh, some really big ones here at the show. Yeah. What'd you do? Absolutely. So, uh, <laughs> well, uh, a, few, a few things that are ongoing. So, first and foremost, you know, for, uh, we're, we're have the uh, North American debut of both the uh, SEIC R7 vehicle over here to the right. North American view of the Volvo EX90 vehicle over to the left. Both these are two Luminar equipped flagship vehicles from the largest Chinese automaker and the leader in global safety, Volvo. So incredible to be able to have this here at the booth. Uh, you know, we're obviously powering the, um, you know, the core, uh, you know, LiDAR technology and some, you know, base software layers to enable, you know, a next generation safety and autonomy you know, for these types of companies. And uh, this is a great example of how it's materialized more than just a vision and dream, but for the first time into real consumer production vehicles that people can get their hands on. And, uh, you know, I, I think I think we've transformed what autonomous vehicles have looked like from you seeing the test cars with the huge roof racks and a supercomputer in the trunk into something that you can, you can now actually buy on a consumer vehicle, not for, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, but for, you know, uh, that we can provide for a thousand dollars or less. Yeah, there's got to be some personal satisfaction of working so hard for so long and seeing what it has become. And it is funny. I, I go around and we'll call this the transportation wing of CES. I am still seeing these gigantic uh, arrays, but I'm fascinated still how you and your partners have been able to put these arrays in these very stylish form factors. How, how does that happen? How did you get there? Yeah. So, um, so when it comes down to it, I think, you know, the integration side of this is definitely, uh, definitely super important and being able to work closely and collaboratively with each of the OEMs to be able to get that nailed is, is something that was, you know, a multi year long effort, but we're always continuing to improve and iterate. And I think you'll continue to see the designs get even better and better and better, but also at the same time, you know, something gets very distinctive from a consumer brand standpoint, even a Luminar brand standpoint. And that's why we actually even have the updated branding as well alongside of it there too. Congratulations. As consumers. So it's great. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I really like the whole 3D thing. I think it sort of, you know, talks about what's next about protecting. And you talked about it at your press conference and, and that was pretty cool. Then you had your trifecta of millions. Talk about that a little bit. It was like a million life save, million vehicles. Just no, give me that yeah, one. Yeah. I don't have it memorized, but yeah, it was, it was a hundred, hundred, hundred plan. So, you know, there you go. hundred uh, sa save as many as a hundred million lives, a hundred trillion hours out of the road over the next hundred years. So that's our hundred year vision of what's ahead with Luminar. And, and so I got that totally wrong, but thanks for correcting me. Uh, yeah. That's, that's what that, yeah, I appreciate that. A million years would be a long time. So, you know, a okay. million years. <laughs> no, no. I think you're referring to the million cars. I was thinking maps. about cars or lies. Oh, 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 we do actually. Okay. Separately. Yeah. We, we are expecting that we will have. Yeah, no, that was good. We, we are, we will have over a million Luminar equipped cars in the second half of this decade here too. And that was part of what was contributing to the overall mapping. So I want to talk about the civil maps, by the way. Yeah. Very cool. You know, AI is a underpinning of this whole event, right? For a number of years, it's been an underpinning, but it definitely is now. The map experience to date is okay. But I think in the future, right, if we really want to get safety and autonomy, right, we've got to go 3D. So you made this kind of stealthy acquisition. Talk a little bit about your vision for civil maps and how this is going to kind of reimagine a safer, more autonomous future. Yeah, so uh, when it when it comes down to it, you know, huge believer that there's a, a ton of opportunities ahead in the mapping space, and 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 I think it's one of those areas that's even traditionally somewhat overlooked, you know, in terms of its importance to the overall the game of autonomy and assistive driving, et cetera. So if we want to be able to truly achieve the level of autonomy in next generation ADAS, like that's that's an essential part of it. 
But the challenge right now is there really is no comprehensive worldview of an HD 3D map that exists out there that's even remotely up to date. You know, the best way that people do it today between the Googles and Apples and Here's and Tom Toms of this world is by manually driving around, you know, hundreds of cars, you know, uh, to be able to, to collect data from the world around you from these huge, you know, extremely expensive, massive roof racked rigs. And maybe you guys have seen, you know, uh, for the audience or you guys may have seen some of the like the street view cars, you know, for other things, for example. So, you know, the, the distinction here is now for the first time, this level of technology is actually being put onto vehicles itself with us in series production. So that's going from, you know, what historically is hundreds of vehicles to now hundreds of thousands of vehicles and actually over a million vehicles in just the coming handful of years. So, yeah. And to clarify, step. this is a new business segment for Luminar. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, this is brand new. So you could be the maps dealer to the world, right? Yeah, yeah. Dealer of maps. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, I don't know. That first graphic you put up in the press release, you know, I mean, it was uh, some ship's captain or something. Yeah. So, I mean, no, it, it is really exciting. And uh, I had some of the press ask me about, hey, what do you think about this? And on one side, it was, wow, it is a surprise. But on the other, there should be no surprise because the amount of data and the quality of the data that you could pick up in real time in 3D is so much and so big and so much better than what's going to be out there today. And I also think, uh, and again, here are the analysts talking here. I do think you've got uh, first mover status on this with this. So I'm pretty excited about that. Oh, yeah, no, no, I, absolutely. And I think uh, that 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 sailor that you're talking about was actually a cartographer, uh, you know, uh, Gerard Mercator. And uh, that was when they first had a uh, the opportunity to take a, a 3D world and map it onto a, a 2D, you know, service algorithmically was kind of the first person to do that. And um, I, I think it, it's just as that kind of kicked off a mapping revolution there too. Back in the 1500s, you know, you're talking about a, uh, a mapping revolution of what happened with the Googles and Apples of this world back in the 2000s. Now this is kind of what's what's ne the next mapping revolution um, that we're leading the charge in from a 3D, HD, always up to date world view and uh that that is an incredibly important aspect of it that i, I think will uh unquestionably continue to serve um serve us but the whole reason why it made sense for luminar is because of the lidar foundation that's that's why it otherwise it may seem random but getting that million cars out on the road is something incredibly special and i think will enable things that people couldn't even imagine and in fact we're already establishing customers today and providing the data today yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense just because it's inherent behavior. You yeah. get it, your technology into a million cars. Those million cars become the creators of this 3D future, this 3D maps. People, just like the phone, right? We just used the apps. And by using the apps, we made the apps better. Right. Same thing now. We drive the cars, make the experience better, make it safer. Now, we had Polestar. We had Volvo, a couple of your new partners, although you've, I, I'm hearing a lot more coming your way. And that's exciting. Um and I asked them all this, but I want to ask you this as sort of the founder and, and the person behind uh, Luminar here. Um, why multi-sensing? You know, there's a certain company that's talking autonomous in the future that believes all about camera, all about vision. Uh, you seem to be all about safety, but this is the moment, this is the setting you up. Why do they need to go multi-sensor? Why does LiDAR need to be in every vehicle? Yeah. Well, I think I think we have their uh, former autonomous leader and uh, former general counsel here. Maybe you can speak to it. You know, <laughs> uh, uh, but, I didn't uh, say who. Yeah, I yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's their assertions, yeah, yeah. right? What are you talking about? No, no. I think uh, the the realist and the reality is here too. Is you with camera based systems, you can build an incredible assisted driving system. If you want to be able to build next gen safety, you want to be able to build autonomous systems. You need to be able to have. Uh, you know, a LIDAR, and, and frankly, not just any LIDAR, you need high performance LIDAR that can be able to accurately get a very clear understanding of everything going on in the world around you. So that makes all the difference. And, and that's really what is the key driver behind uh, why we've seen such as massive adoption of now the majority of major automakers in the industry. So people are getting into the game. Obviously, the exciting thing here today is that, you know, these vehicles are launching, it's happening, it's coming, not just, you know, in Europe or in China, but to the US as well. Uh, at a global scale. So um, it, it's pretty impressive to see all of this really come together. And um, I think w uh, what's also interesting too is that the, is an additional trend. And um, this was one of the four key 2022 goals that we, uh, we've all successfully met. You know, one of them was also a start of production and one of them was a major commercial wins. It, it's getting embedded on more major programs and 
vehicle models uh, from these major automakers. And that's something that I think is going to be a key driver for success and growth as we continue to expand and as we continue to get adopted, not just on higher end vehicle models, but on more mainstream models. Like, you know, if you take a look like, I don't know, the, the, the site car here, for example, I mean, this is like a, you know, what, on the order of a $50,000 car here too. And it's, it's, you have this LIDAR embedded and it's all, it's becoming mainstream, you know, in, in these vehicles. So you have folks like even, um, you know, it's not just the Mercedes of this world, but you also have folks like Nissan, you know, that are able to now say, hey, we want to have this standard on every new vehicle that we produce by the end of the decade. So it's all coming together and it's really happening quite well. So I am um, i couldn't be more excited to be able to see that through. And um, like I said, a lot a lot left to do ahead, but it'll be um, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll be an incredible journey. But we did meet those four milestones, too. So we're executing it along the way. So we uh, went went back to the 1500s with a cartographer. We talked ah. a little bit about uh, what you accomplished in 2022. We talked about what you announced here at the show. What are your priorities for 2023? Is it getting integrated into more models inside current partners that you have? It's obviously uh, building out maps, uh, uh, but I want to hear it from you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's all of the above. I, I would say that the most straightforward path to try and get to mass adoption is leveraging the existing partnerships because, you know, there's a certain level of significant overhead and investment that you have to make for each new OEM partner that you take on. And you actually have a ton of leverage, you know, when you're already like inside an OEM and working with them and collaborating. Of course, it's it's honestly, it's not a straightforward thing. It's very, very challenging to try and make the leap from one initial vehicle model to like multiple vehicle models across a program platform or multiple platforms there for an OEM. So being able to do that, uh, we think is something that um, we're going to only continue to do more and more of and will be huge proof points along the way uh, to be able to show how this isn't just a, you know, pie in the sky thing only for uh, wealthy vehicle buyers, but can be something that has the opportunity to truly democratize safety for everyone. Yeah, we share that sentiment. I mean, if you can save a life, you should do everything you can. So vehicle manufacturers that aren't taking this technology serious, that are missing the opportunity, um, are missing a chance to really not only sell a, a product that's going to be great, but actually do something good for society, which, by the way, is something we should all be trying to do every single day. Really, you know, it's been a, really a pleasure, uh, Austin, to watch sort of the evolution. By the way, it's been really a pleasure to see these cars are pretty these are really good looking cars. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, I'm a gearhead. Right. And like so even independent I, of the Luminar 7. I actually, looks awesome, you so. know, <laughs> it's, they're actually like, you, you're like, wow, I'd actually drive that. Like, yeah. you know, it's, it, it's so, I mean, getting to the point now where the technology is being built. Hey, in, if you drive it, that, that's saying something. So I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a fancy guy. No, I, you just look at it. You're like, this is nice. I could see myself in it. And by the way, in the future, when you get to that full autonomy, when I can take that meeting, <laughs> whether it's with Lumina or any other of our, of our clients, you know, while I'm in the car and sitting in traffic, I'm pretty excited about that, too. And I know we're not yeah. there yet, but with LiDAR and, and all the multi-sensing technology, we're going to get there soon. Oh, no, it is pave, paving the path to get there. And uh, I think that that's where you're going to see already some of those advanced highway features start rolling out immediately. And it's only going to get better and better and better over time. So where can people find out more information about what Luminar is going to do in the future? I think you had mentioned it an event that you're having yes, coming yes. up here. So, nice so we you. actually have uh, Luminar Day uh, that's happening on, on February 28th. So that's something that we're hosting uh, live in Orlando, Florida at our headquarters. Um, so, you know, there'll be um, select invites. I believe you can um, you can reach out or uh, register online if you want to request an invite for in person or uh, you can tune in online to be able to see it. So that's for the first time we're actually going to be unveiling our holistic product roadmap, uh, financial model. I, I think we've ever actually done either of those since we as a public company at any point. So, you know, among other things along the way and being able to have, you know, even our some of our own customers speak to, you know, the products and technology and capabilities. So it'll be exciting, but uh, a lot ahead. Austin, thanks so much for coming on the show here. Super impressed. Uh, five years ago, people said that this wasn't going to happen in LiDAR. And I love to see examples where the naysayers were proven wrong and congratulations on the success that the company has had. We're sitting here literally in your booth with two production cars 
with your technology in it, you're in full production and uh, at least one of your partners is in full production, almost there with the other one, but it's super exciting to see and I cannot wait to see what the future holds here. I love maps. Can't wait to see where you're going to take that because it kind of came out of nowhere, but eh, not really. You should have expected it. Anyways, yeah. thanks for coming we've on the show. We've been about it for years, but you know, it's, it's, it's all about the timing and getting that right and, and we've made enough progress, but no, thanks. Thanks for the, uh, the kind words there. And I think, you know, it's, it's awesome to see how many other folks in the industry that I think were frankly pretty shocked that we were able to pull off what we were able to pull off. So um, I, I think uh, I'm going to look forward to continue to, get some more shocked faces five years from now too yeah austin thanks so much uh and thanks everybody for tuning in here it's great having austin here alumni of the six five multi times we'll always appreciate you joining the show hit that subscribe button if you like what you see check out all the six five videos here at ces 2023 in las vegas but for patrick myself and austin we got to say goodbye so we'll see y'all later